What's up, everybody? This is Drex One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast. We took a little break, but we're back better than ever behind the lens. Today, we got Rocky Vision. We got King Says. Shout out to the producer, Skino. On the boards, we got DEO. Shout out to our sponsors, Amoeba Music of San Francisco and Dying Breeze, San Francisco, where you can get some of this original clothing as well as all your graffiti supplies. But today, man, we got a living legend in the building, one of the architects of Bay Area, San Francisco hip-hop, the one and only JT, the bigger figure. Salute. Appreciate y'all for having me. Number but love. I appreciate you, man. This, this, is, this is big for us. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who, who are familiar, but for those who aren't, I mean, JT is one of the pioneers of independent hip-hop, not just in the Bay Area, but, but worldwide. Producer, rapper, businessman, facts, filmmaker, Entrepreneur, uh, positive force in the community. Facts. facts. Uh, 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 in, in the Bay Area and beyond. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you a funny story, bro. This is actually not the first time that we're face to face. Okay. I'm going to tell you. So this is, is going to trip you out. All right. Put me up on it. The year was 2006. I wake up on like a Sunday and everybody's buzzing because everyone's talking about JT bringing Gucci Mane to the to the Bayview Opera House. <laughs> <laughs> JT bringing what? Gucci Mane to Hunters Point. He's doing an open mic. Everybody can uh, get on and rap. Mic. Ooh, that would have been <laughs> hardcore, right? So there. I show. I'm like, oh, for real. All right. I, I, show, I get all my friends. Everyone's like, I don't know. I go to the point. I'm like, come on, we gotta go. We gotta, we gotta go. go. We gotta go. I, 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 I pulled up. It was hella kids. Was, I was like a teenager myself at the time. Mm. And uh, you were patting people down personally. You and the, <laughs> <laughs> you and the Nation Man, of Islam. listen. <laughs> and uh, this was actually the first time. Uh, hella people rocked. This is the first time I saw Roach Giggs, uh, a couple other cats from the city. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, bro, can I rap? you like, yeah, yeah. Okay, you on after him. I'm like, all right, cool. Next dude goes on. I'm like, is it my time? You're like, actually, uh, you on it. Three more people. Mm. I'm like, all right, okay. Three more people come on. You're like, actually, you wanted like five more people. I'm oh, like, damn, no, all right, all right. Uh, damn, it must have been a real... <laughs> it, was, it was a mess, bro. And then the next thing I know is like something terrible from Sack was rocking. And mm. I, I just get on stage like, bro, what's up? You told me I'm, I'm on next. You're like, yeah, you got to talk to them. I was just like, ah, I think this is a wrap. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what? <laughs> and I, and One I'm, thing I can say, <laughs> your effort in being denied helped develop who you are right now. Absolutely. Right you, and I'm pretty sure you got a few more things you thought it was just going, you was going, and then it was like, ah. But them moments yeah. are the moments that be like, shit, boy, watch next time, or they going to spill me, or I'm going to get it done, or I'm going to get it out. Like back then, it was all about, I got to get this album out. Yeah. I'm going to say what I want to say on the album, or I'm going to make my statement. You know, whatever... Whatever didn't go right, if I get this album out, I'm not gonna care what didn't go right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. But much no, love, yeah, yeah. Though, no, that that was just a uh, cool little moment in time. The other thing I learned is sometimes you just gotta grab the mic. That's how I go too. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta. When just, it's hectic, especially. Yeah. Because somebody be like, "Well, I was next, and I was next. Yeah. Or this my my brother, my cousin, put my brother on, and you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that was also dope too because growing up in Frisco, that's one of the things that was really dope, is that our rappers was like connected to the soil. It yeah. wasn't something like you only see him on TV. You on, you might see yeah. Selsky driving around in a bucket. Nah, real talk. You might see Fote wiggling. You might see well, JT pull thing, up at though, the opera house. If we ever went mainstream, mainstream, I think I still would have been connected. I mean, a lot of us would, but once you get to a certain level, you got to fall back because even back then, the streets was dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. It was dangerous. I, I, I can't think of when it wasn't dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> From 92 to now, it's just been, it been dangerous. Like, so even though you can't be an artist if you're not connected to the people. Yeah. Like, every artist your neighborhood promotes you first. Mm -hmm. At least back then. Now more that the internet, you can have a group of people in, in, in Kansas City uh, promoting you or uh, Chicago like you more than where you're from. Yeah. So, it's other opportunities for, for your exposure in this time period. Yeah. 
you know. So making it, man, is still the same thing. But the danger of being outside is real. It's a real thing well, as a rapper for sure. That was the, what was dope about that event is that you were promoting it as a peaceful type of thing. Yes. And you had the Nation of Islam out there. And, and man, nothing salute go, to my brother. Go left. It was dope. Um, but that's a good transition to where I want to start this interview because okay. you've been doing a lot of talking lately and I've been seeing some dope interviews. Yes, yeah, so But, you know, I'm from the city, so I really want to get to the roots of this shit. Okay, and come on with it. Filmo, California. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in the Mo? And for people who've never heard of Filmo, never been to Filmo, uh, paint that picture for them. Um, It's the west side of the city, the last black community Uh. When you in a city, it's seven miles by seven miles. But that's pretty big, though. It's still pretty big, 49 square miles. But mm -hmm. Filmo is positioned as a black neighborhood that actually developed on accident. But once it started, this never stopped. They never had no plan and no black people living, you know, this close to downtown. So, so many people moved into the neighborhood of Fillmore and there was so many entrepreneurs. Like in all of, in any neighborhood, there's entrepreneurs. But in Filmo, there was a plethora. There was so many entrepreneurs where Filmo Street developed into like Baby Harlem. Yeah. Like, so growing up, I was exposed to uh the the heavy black culture of arts and craft, of music and expression, and um we had jazz and uh, as time went on, we had, you know, concerts. We had the strutting uh, uh, Demons of the Mind. Yeah, yeah, Lonnie yeah. Green. Yep. You know, that was bigger than rap. That was the first rap type stuff that's rap oriented. Like the way you go to a concert is to see these dudes strut mm -hmm. with them beats. So my growing up, um, it was heavy film mode based upon just our culture there was a place called Virgos, was the center of Fillmore, Virgos. So, you know, you go down, you're down to OC, you go up Martin Luther King, Turkwood, you keep going further, you're in West Side, you know, Central Street, Central Street Housing, um, Page Street, uh, Hayes Valley, Banneker Homes, Friendship Village, Prince Hall, like all these different apartment buildings. My father was from... OC projects, 12-story projects. My my mother, I mean, my, my grandfather was from Fulton Street. Okay. Okay, so these two different locations. But when I was born, I was born and moved into KO. Mm -hmm. So that's how I end up being from KO. My father from OC, so it just automatically make me OC. Then my grandmother, I mean, my, my grandfather. So I was a child growing up that had access to multiple sides of the neighborhood. And then as time went on, when people started dividing up the neighborhood, I grew up into, well, I'm not with that. You yeah. know, my family from here, from here. So that's why I think I'd be so heartbroken about the killing of each other, especially in film. So growing up, that's why I say it so much. I'm like, I remember how it used to be. We used to be proud. We used to feel good. We used to be like, it was exciting. Yeah. Now it's like, man. You know, and as time go on, you know, I'm pretty sure a new generation is coming. They can paint their own way. But me growing up, um, being exposed to the rap game, like people like Huey MC. So was Huey MC the first rapper from Filmo that you remember? <clears throat> For my generation, he a little older. Yes. Okay. He the first certified, at least the one that I could see. At least out. Have him he had a of, cassette tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. he had a cassette tape. He had some some vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, by 1990, though, when I was on Log Cabin Ranch, we used to lift weights to uh, keep a bitch broke. Mm -hmm. He MC. I think it was an EP. It was only like probably five, six songs. Yes, with uh, X1. DJ X1. Yeah. Shout out to DJ X1. Uh, I recorded my first official songs at DJ X1 house in 1990. He made the beats. He let me do the vocals at his house. I made my first demo, took it back to Log Cabin Ranch, and I just kept listening to that until it was 92 when I actually really, really began my pursuit. So yeah. my early days, though, growing up in film, though, it was the culture, though. Like, when you say, what was it like? It was like a heavy culture. Uh, 
in every neighborhood have their own culture. You feel me? So, but me getting exposed to the entrepreneurship of, even though some of the stuff might have been illegal, sure. but just seeing it and the benefits of being an entrepreneur. Well, you're talking barbershops, clothing yes, stores, barbershop, liquor a, a stores, record, store. record stores. Yes, yeah. yes. Money that's coming in. Yeah. Just because they have a shop, right? Whatever you got right here, it's somebody's spending some money with you. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's spending some money. Yeah, because every, every hood in Frisco is, like, proud, but there's just something about Filmo. Like, Filmo is, like, a whole village. <laughs> and I feel like Filmo cast rep Filmo above Frisco, above everything. Like, if you ain't from Filmo, then <laughs> you don't really count, man. You know, I think I... Gr- <laughs> Over time, though, I definitely grew to include the others. Well, I can say, man, for hella years, because I did the film mode 100 point. Like, once we squashed the beef, it made me feel easier to want to work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, as long as it was beef, it was like, uh-uh. I, th- I think that's one thing that, yeah. that made you stand out. And that's another thing I wanted to, like, mention is just, like, every hood in Frisco got a lot of rappers. Filmo got a lot of rappers, like, from you, Huey MC, Fote, Nicotina, Quinn, the rest of the Get Low, and even now, Lil Yee, New Yee, generation, Lil P. Yes. Um, what yeah. do you think that is that 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 made that such like a hot spot for for rappers? I think our generation kicked it off that teenagers could have money. Okay, straight up, JT was the first one saying go independent. Pressure like I advocated to the youth. To my peers, the other 18-year-old, hey, boy, it's money in the music. Hey, boy, find a rapper. Even if you ain't a rapper, find one. Back then, you could just find somebody. Yeah. Press up their music, and the record store still going to buy them. hmm Just at least your first batches, they going to be sold. Just because back then, a new rapper was like... So I think my story, and Andre Nicotina too, Quinn, you know, Messi Marv, the guys who... Uh, we all played a part for our generation, but so many more came behind us because people could see that, hey, man, these dudes used to steal cars and break in houses. Now they got rap money. Yeah. I think I want some. Yeah, a lot of dudes was like, you know what? I can make beats, or I could record, or I could mix down, or I could hold the cat. Like, it, it made it exciting because there's actually some money there. Yeah. So seeing the new generation, I think they got access to more money than we have because now... I mean, you got guys doing four, five hundred thousand a month. I don't want to say no names, but they digital check could be easily four, five hundred thousand a month. Mm -hmm. Some guys in a meal ticket per month. Um, The digital age made it made it like that. When you super hot, your feature if you bang out hella features, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand. Then sometime it get up to. 50,000, 80, 100,000. Now, you know, nigga, up to 200, 300 folk. Now, a feature for, you know, on Drake album, uh, a million dollar type shit. You feel me? So, like, it's so much money to make from the product, even the show money. Yeah. Like, down south I, is where I saw artists that was on the same level like our artists, but out there, they getting 10, 20, 30,000 a show. Yeah. And I didn't see that here. I never even heard nobody busting the 10, 20, 30, you know. That's true. I'm pretty sure there's like 40 water in them, yeah. too short, but yeah. as far as somebody, well, I could say Larry June and them probably doing it, maybe Mozzie, you know, uh, probably Filthy Rich if he was, you know. But down there, that was average. Right. I was, I was trying my best to catch that wave, but I'm like, you know what? I did the best I could for the time I was there for my for my motion, but now I got my eyes on movies. Yeah. Yeah, let me go and switch over here because I didn't did this music and it kept me alive. No matter if I never became the hottest, it didn't matter. As long as my my baby mamas, my wife, my children, you feel me? Uh, me, my bills paid off this shit. Mm-hmm. So if nothing else, the bills paid off of it. For this whole time I ever been in the game, I never had to go get a job or I never had. So I thank God for using my my God-given talent of creating a product, sell it. Sometimes it's flat rate. Sometimes it's residual. It don't matter. It's all about getting, you better get something. Who Imagine making all them beats or songs or something. And then you're like, oh, I'm just holding on to my masterpiece. Yes, that's probably a certain feeling. But you might have to do a deal where it's a joint venture so you can get a cash advancement for what you've already recorded. Yeah, that's something I learned is like there's there's this thing as an artist, right, where you're supposed to you, you get this idea, you're supposed to do it for the love. 
but you always going to love it. But you got to actually make it sustainable at a certain point where you can keep doing it. And you got to, you, when you're trying to create something, you got to make a marketable product when you're spending all this money to create this. Um, the, the cost of being a rapper now is probably more expensive too, though. Because back then, you could pay for some posters, some flyers, drive to all the local. You ain't got to worry about L.A., to, you know, nowhere else. You can make all your money back then just in stores that you could drive to from Stockton, Sacramento, you know what I mean? Yeah, Northern California. Modesto, you could even go to Modesto. You could go to Ukiah, Santa Rosa. Like, there's if it's a record store, all you needed was to find out. Because back then, it wasn't just no... No booklet to say here go all the record stones. I was one of the first guys to make a book. What, what so what are you doing? Were you cracking open the yellow pages, or you got to crack open the yellow pages? And matter of fact, that's what you had to do. Yeah. And then you had to call the operator because back then you could, if four one one or something. If, well, yeah. even before four one one. Nope. This even before four one one. This is operator. Mm. Yes, operator. Yes. Um. I'm trying to go to. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any record stores that you can connect me with in Sonoma. You had you just asked. Now, yeah. of course, you could look, but when you just wanted to know for sure, they have the list already right there, and you call operator at the pay phone. Wasn't no, it wasn't no, uh, wasn't no phones. Mm -hmm. It's in the house or it's at the pay phone. So the level of work you had to do. But let's just say this. A hundred DVDs back then per store. Let's just say that's the... I want half my money up front. The other half I get when they sell sometime. Or they just buy them up front if you buzzing. Okay. $1,200. A thousand DVDs. Press shrink wrap full color. I'm dropping off a hundred or I'm dropping off a fifty to all the stores. So a thousand really not a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you if you spend twelve hundred and the money that's due to you at that time, you wanted eight dollars. Cause they finna sell them for sixteen. Yeah. So you had eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Back then, who, I didn't mind being stuck on the freeway, driving way yeah, over yeah, here, because yeah. they already waiting. Yeah. Drive through San Francisco, there was at least five, six, seven, eight spots in the city. Oakland, there was like three or four. You feel me? Like, back then, it was like, and then you would call them, hey, bro, how we looking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to need a few. Just give me a day or two. I'm going to be ready to reorder. Man, now you driving back. Mm -hmm. So... But today, you don't got to do all that goddamn driving. You go right online, do everything. You could be a star from your house, your studio. You could be a star from right here. You killing the game. You doing views at a certain point. Now you doing your shows and shit. Yeah. You doing features from, from your Instagram page. Hey, man, you know, five band deposits coming in. Like, yeah. that type of shit is what I really was trying to get my... But I, I was able to carve out my own way to get it. But I knew... If I catch a buzz like I caught in the past, I know what to do with it. So any little buzz, I knew how to automatically stretch my little baby buzz into a bigger shine for me. Like, yeah. like what I did in Atlanta. It was a little buzz, but the way I did it, it stretched so big, it's like, shit, that ain't little. Yeah. You made an impact in a place you're not even from. Right, right, right. So let's let's go back, because this, I really want to get, as I tell, as we tell your story, I want people to, to pull all the game from out of it because that's what really sets you apart is the fact that you actually took the effort to do all those things you're talking about. Yes, sir. So you mentioned you're in Log Cabin. You, you, you got a demo. You, you're here in QEMC. Fote is out at this point. Um, no, Fote no. wasn't out, but he okay. was featured on two on shorts, two shorts joint. in 1988. Okay. I got locked up 89 and then I stayed in jail all of 90. Well, not jail, but Log Cabin Ranch. Mm -hmm. I got out 91, but in, on, in Log Cabin Ranch though, Cool Nut, It's called Scandalous. Um, like, Scandalous. Mm -hmm. That was on repeat. Hugh MC, Keep a Bitch Broke, on repeat. 415, on repeat. Them three for show out the gate. Oh, Too Short, on repeat. 
Okay, so that's four, right? So that's that's nineteen ninety. That's the workout program. Off them, off them songs. Coming home. Totally insane, I think, popped out first. As the newest, hottest, you know, something that's new and is so, so exciting. TC from Frisco, he make the beat, so that's how they automatically then they they automatically tied in. Boom, he double back and help RBL Posse with that shit. I'm like, oh shit. They the one put the fire up under my ass for show. Like, and it was coming up out of intermittent records. I'm like, I gotta get a deal over there. Then they signed Rapper Forte. I'm like, ooh, I gotta go sign over there. You didn't wanna sign me. I don't know what it was. I was like, so I end up pressing up my tapes myself and bring them back anyway. And now his distribution side of his shit is selling my music. And now he's trying to sell me because he see how much music sell. I'm like, boy, I can't sell it. I can't sign them right now. He like, man, I got something for you. I was like, I know, but I just you already owe me some nights. So I'm happy with that. Mm. You owe me 15 bands and, and Black C and them signed for 7500. Right. When he told me that, and they like, shit, he finna give us. I would have signed any contract if he finna give me seven thousand five hundred and ninety two. Yeah, man, give it here, boy. What? But you had the opportunity to see. I got rejected. What? What you could do on your own? No, I got rejected. I just told you about that. Right. That hurt me. Right. Right. How the hell you got RBL Posse? You got totally insane. You got uh, cool nut. You got. And a couple other guys. I'm yeah. like, man, I'm part, I'm, I'm one of them guys. I'm gonna have to pass, JT. Rejection made me say, all right. That, that, that little fire in you. Man. Yeah. And getting told no. Yeah. And I'm watching everybody else take flight. I'm like, nah, yeah. I gotta force myself. I made myself to be part of this new movement, but I got rejected, so I had to do it on my own. That's what gave me fear is signed to itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is this very first tape is that it's dank or dope, right? With dank the or dope, black and white June. color. Yep, yeah. June. He rejected that. Then I double back a few months later, November 16th, 1992, with Don't Stop Till We Major. And my man's pressed up 5,000 cassette tapes. And we dropped off a lot to him, but we dropped off a lot to some stores. And we dropped off some to Walter Zelnick at City Hall. But when you had that first tape, were you going before you even went to... I never really went to a distributor with you that. Went, I had, took had it to him as a demo. Okay. But I went to record stores. But you were walking around selling it to people. Hell yeah, or, yeah. I was yeah. selling it myself. And I was just going to record stores. And yeah. I was passing them out. Yeah. I, once I heard cars playing it, and once I heard the hood, like, boy, that's hot. That's, this shit hot. I'm like, man, I'm finna make me another tape. If y'all like this tape, I'm finna make another one. That's what forced me to make another one because I seen how fast I... Right, right. People was enjoying it with no... This ain't full gazy. Like, man, JT hot. Right. So that's what made me be like, well, oh, shit, I, I, they shouldn't have told me that. You think this is on the strength of the fact that, like, there was barely any other rappers out at For the time? For sure. Yeah. You were just right yeah. place, right time. I was the right place to want to flood it. JT got 10 fucking projects out in 94, man. He got his whole neighborhood. JT got artists. He made all the beats. God damn it. I'm, he rapping on there. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing Master P and them through. Uh, uh, e Foldy. Like, I, I made people respect. Because I already knew I ain't going to be the hottest. But once I hit with game recognized game, though, I automatically said, I'm not going to be a dummy. I'm finna take this buzz instead of trying to enjoy it as a rapper and like, oh, I'm just a nigga. And focus on me. I hear it up and produce Demo Self Quinn. I came back with the GLP album. Like basically, I knew I better take this moment in time and turn myself into an executive. Cause if my rap don't work going into the future, I think I got a shot, I got a chance. But I don't care. I need to make sure I'm a CEO and I'm gonna need to make sure I can make these beats and yeah. I'm an engineer. I'm mixing my own shit. I'm, I'm I'm doing my keyboards. If I can't play it and it's too hard, I bring somebody in, help me play this shit, man. I'm going to replay this. But you know what I mean? Like, whatever I couldn't do, I wasn't scared to ask nobody. Like, bro, I need some help. Fuck that. I need some help. And when you, you mentioned um, Demo, Quinn, and Seth, all y'all are on this song, the SFC, Frisco Niggas Ain't No Punks, um, with RBL. And that song, and rest in peace, Gigolo G, he produced that, correct? 
And Mr. C, man. Still okay. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Okay. Yeah. Jiggle OG so, is the producer. Shout out to Jig. Um, that track is significant because it was it represented two turfs coming together uh, through the music, and you were part of uh, like the peace negotiations. Uh, to explain explain that whole situation and how that got resolved. Before that, we hated Hunter's Point that hated us. RBL drop. We love the RBL regardless. Mm. Straight up. Totally insane RBL. They, like I say, they came out in this close little proximity. But them two tapes, we was bumping them anyway. So when the circumstances came for us to have a communication and we got invited over to the projects uh, with Black Seed and them on Harbor Road and Hunters Point as Filmo niggas coming. And this the first project saying, hey, we squashing the beef. Y'all coming, we gonna solidify it. So taking that chance was like a gamble because people already been shot the hell up. So it's like, and then we going in their neighborhood. So once I seen it was real, I I wanted to work with RBL after that. Yep, I did. Because I, I already liked it. So I'm like, well, shit, this is kind of dope that we ain't beefing no more. And I was at the meeting, and he was at the meeting, and we should do a song together. But Jig is the architect that's like, when we talked about it, he said, I'm going to find out. We're going to put that together. We're going we gonna to call some 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 people that that work with RBL Posse. That's that's. That's they big homies from their hood. Mm -hmm. Talk to our big homie, and then once they talk, like, woo, woo, woo. all right, yeah, JT, and then woo. Then Jig said, I'm going to make the beat, and we're going to do it at Funny Bunny House. I'm like, they, they going to do it? He's like, bro, they going to do it. So when we did it, and then they did it, I was like, oh, that's too hard. That's dope. Yeah, that's, that's a, too that's hard, a, that's a right? And it song. represented the moment that we came together, and then it represented the city. Yeah. So it definitely, that was another marker in my career, stamping me as a legend in my own city. It's, and, you, sure. and, and you had the rest of what they would eventually, y'all would eventually become a group to get low players. I'm not going to say we was going to be a group. That's that's not correct. Uh, Demo was the first rapper. Okay. Out of this. And then San Quinn was a young rapper that we didn't know nothing about. Seth was rapping, but he wasn't taking it serious. Uh, and then me, I was just like part-time, not even part, I wasn't even pursuing it. I at a certain point, I I wasn't pursuing it. I was just a fan and a hype man for Demo. But then when I was like, shit, I need to take, I need to do me some songs so I can become somebody. So Demo's rap, rapping He the before. real rapper. Demo the mm. Youngster is the real first rapper that I wanted to be like. Mm. Period. His bars were so nasty and the crowd always go, ooh, when he be rapping. I'm like, I need them to say ooh for me. Yep. Up oh, prayer time. Yep. So, um, Demo, yeah, so, but me and Demo was friends. And then me and Seth and Demo was friends. So we was going to be called the YBG, but that's a real game. So right, right. I, I was like, nah, we need to be the G, GLP, Get Low. Get Low players. Like, why be Young Black Gangster? That's two Get Low players. Like, man, we play it like we, you know, it's the independent game. I, I thought that, that was dope that the independent game, Get Low players, just all of that concept kind of just went together. So... The movement was easy to do. Was that before you had the idea of Get Low Records or around the nah, same time? I already had the, the idea for Get Low Records came to me in 91, but I didn't have no money. Mm. I didn't have no studio set up. Like, I just, I just knew I want to be, I want to be a record label. Yeah, I want to be a record label, but I want to be a rapper, though, so I got to be a rapper first. But if somebody could sign me, I'll sign to their label. When they when I got rejected, I I end up starting my own, and that is got like it, I said it, from the beginning. Yeah. Rejection it hurts you when you going through it. Like damn, <laughs> nigga, like you could cry. Nah, it ain't no crying, bro. Pick your head up, and mm -hmm. then you gotta keep pushing. Mm -hmm. When you get to success, you're gonna be hella happy. You're gonna be feeling it. Did, yeah. Did, did were you taking notes from like? I'm trying to think of the other labels at the time, right? Sick with it. Sick with it. Young Black Brother as well. Young Black Brother. In a Minute In Records. Minute. Uh, Itchy Band Records that signed Spice One and then 
put them on uh, Jive. Uh, 92, Dr. Dre and them came, so I started studying that. Easy e I already had studied. Yeah. Um, when Ice Cube left on, then Dr. Dre left, I kind of just, I still like the Easy e but it just wasn't the same. Like, damn, they, they ain't even friends. Nigga, what kind of shit is this? We the fans. But this is my first time seeing a rap group that supposed to be together. But when I seen Dr. Dre spin off into Death Row Records, that was just the most amazing. But nah, before that, when Ice Cube spent off and had back-to-back albums that I just loved. Yeah, and the, and the Then whole, he did the movie the, shit. And the lynch mob and all that, too. That's what, yeah. So yeah. Ice Cube is still, to this day, my favorite rapper ever. Mm. Ice Cube, my favorite rapper ever. He he stood on business for the black community. He stood on business when, when he seen he wasn't getting his just due, had to spin off and be his own man. He 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 dived in the movies and then started mastering that shit and, and making instead of getting booked to be in the movie he then made the whole damn movie. Yeah. <laughs> so that I became a super fan of that. Uh, I don't watch sports, but I'm proud of him for his uh, big three league. Like ooh, damn, a rapper made a damn basketball league that people actually go see with all the basketball people yeah, that already crazy. used to be somebody that they don't want. Right. He took the garbage. And, try, and polished it up, and then I see that he's still going through his, his, you know, I guess attack or blocking them or what, you know. But uh, nah, this is uh, the history that make you who you are. So, like you say, you was trying to see what things or what people. Each of these elements is what was helping me to craft my mind. Yeah. To see what do I want to do and where I want to go. So when when you're talking about. A lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of labels in the Bay Area now. There's a mm-hmm. lot of local labels, but a lot of them, to be honest, JT, a lot of them are just logos on a, on a, on a, on a graphic, right? When you talk about actual record label, you need a, a corporation, you need a business license, you need trademarks, you need copyrights, you need publishing, you need all these types of things. You started Get Low Records in in an apartment. How long did it take you to really? And you're learning, you're teaching all yourself all these things as you go. How long did it really take you to get the business side functional as a record label? I think I never really have. Okay, <laughs> if you want to be honest, it's so much stuff. Imagine me with all this music. I never did publishing. Being my ASCAP, uh, it ain't that I, I I shouldn't have or that I don't want to. I just didn't feel like, and I was like, I ain't put my stuff in there, even though it probably could pay me. I just was kind of nervous about signing into that, and then they somehow controlling my music. Or so, you know, that. But as I look back now, I'm like, I need to do that. You should probably do that, bro. You know, you get a publishing check, a separate publishing check off of all your streams and everything. Besides yeah. the actual stream, yeah, royalties you get, yeah. you get YouTube and yeah. all that shit. Nah, that's something that's real talk right there. So, um, but when I look at the workload of all the years of back paperwork I got to do, yeah. But this is it's okay. Well, see, it's not. It's so you're basically running this as a it's a one man operation. That's what I'm doing. Shout yeah. out to my wife though, because she helped me. Without her, the paperwork would be even more of a nightmare. Yeah, so yeah. she's smarter than me with the paperwork or. Printing this out and doing, you know, so that's so you why. didn't you didn't like go see a lawyer and get contracts drafted and get no I got contract no I got corporate okay okay no I'm when I say I never got it together those other elements of like getting publishing registrations and right 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 I didn't have trademarks for everything when I knew when I made trap flicks that's when I knew I better get a trademark because that's a name that if I didn't grab it once it started getting yeah. popular somebody yeah. else could just come behind me. Okay, so I think that's another lesson. It's okay to work as you go, as long as you're making forward progress. You have to go with forward progress. You have to try your best. You have to think your way through things, but it's like, Fig, how can I think my way through something that I have never done before? Yeah. You have to think and demand yourself to pursue the information and or the people who can help you get further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a clear breakdown. Yeah. And that is how it happens. I want to force myself to learn how to make these graphics better. I have a program called Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. 
these are equivalents to final, I mean, to Photoshop mm -hmm. and Adobe Premiere. Um, I've been having them things three years and I didn't went on YouTube and looked. But I still haven't made nothing that significant that I even want to push to the world. Now, mind you, out of three years, I probably worked on that stuff for four months out of three. Right, years. right. Now, let's be right. clear. Okay, so that's some BS on my part. But if I really would have had the time to learn how to be a real graphic designer right now, like how Shimp used to make sure. covers, yeah. listen, if I had a little bit of that knowledge, mm -hmm. I would have been the first rapper to stop doing what I'm doing because the money that comes from graphic design, oh, my goodness, yeah. when you hot. Now, if you just making some. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, that's cute. No, but I got programs that can do it. I'm looking at the demos that, that they're showing me that this thing made. So I'm like, at a certain point, Fig, you're going to have to because all the movie covers I want to make, I don't want to have to depend on my uh, graphic designer or, or other people when I know yeah. they got apps that help you do some of this stuff now, but it's not the chimp type. Like, I know that's a problem. I'm far off from that. But um, the quality of whatever his secret was, he did not tell that to the other designers. Yeah. I, to this day, I haven't seen nobody that was as advanced as Shimp. Yeah, shout out to Shimp, man. Nah, real talk. Yeah. And I was smart enough to pay Shimp to make me a book. Okay, yeah. A whole CEO manual. So uh -huh. shout out to Shimp. And I charged a hundred for it. Right. Yeah, and that that Black Wall Street CEO manual. So now that's an example of me with an idea that I knew if I can get Shimp design over my words and chapters mixed with all these direct contacts for phone, for record stores and different things of business, mm -hmm. that I could put a price tag of $100 on because this is a limited edition and this is candy-coated uh, UV coating uh, product design. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, that I forced myself. I mean, when I hear you talk, bro, like, um, even though you're being honest about what what gaps you still have to fill in, but we're talking about what you are accomplishing, what you have accomplished. It's like, it's the blueprint, man. There's a lot of cats out there that's figuring this shit out. And a lot of this, this shit depends on your knowledge base and, and what kind of information you can get. Because when I hear stories about you figuring out where to get this shit recorded, where to get the tapes uh, manufactured, where to get the inserts printed, all, all that little stuff, how to how to get into um, the different stores. As you go and you develop like these these this game, basically, you can you can kind of make that to like to really run like a, a business, which is what you've been doing. And I, I was wondering too, like, um, what was your approach, especially as like you're saying, like you're getting in the game more. You got game recognized game coming. Like, what was your approach to to marketing and promotion back then? Flyers, posters, and pulling up. Yeah, outside type shit. That's the only, we didn't have the internet. Yeah, there was no email blast. Mm -hmm. There was no DM or let me post it on my bulletin page. It was none of that. You are the bulletin. Mm -hmm. uh, word of mouth is still work, even if you had a good chicken dinner that you were selling. If that chicken tastes a certain way, and enough people eat it, it could be word of mouth. Like traffic coming, like, hey man, uh, my people was telling me you, you selling a chicken place. I want to order. Yeah, like somebody really went over there with one and uh, let the people taste it. It's like, it's like when somebody get a tape back then, everybody would pile around and listen to that one tape. Either in the car, like boy, I got that new Dr. Dre. That that's that's one tape. <laughs> that's one tape. Let me see. Did somebody have a a, a early an early Snoop Dogg, no, Snoop Dogg, it was pandemonium and they made everybody wait till midnight and it was a line and I'm like, damn, midnight? And people really outside, like all, all, all over, well, I don't know how many states, but I know through California, they was waiting. But when Dr. Dre tape came, it was a sample that had um, Dick Griffey uh, Solar Music Group. There you go. It says Solar Music Group. Uh, Dr. Dre. Solar Music Group featuring Snoop Dogg. Uh, 
187 under, on the undercover cop, something like that. And that shit was so hard. Then a bootleg came out of some of the Chronic album before it came out. And I'm like, this cannot be fucking real. Mm. But we didn't know who the other rappers. I mean, we knew Snoop from because he's a dude from Deep Cover. Mm -hmm. But these other voices on this Chronic album, that's called word of mouth. And I think like how my shit back then, as long as you just had a couple posters, some flyers in a few places, a couple of the demos, and then the word of mouth kick in. Mm -hmm. Now your shit's selling. Mm -hmm. So that's how that's how the marketing went. And your your formula, your approach is basically lining up to with Master P's time in the Bay from the from the game that he soaked out here to what he eventually built when he took it back to the South. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like building with him early on? And you you were mostly teaching or putting him on, up on stuff. Is that I correct? was supporting him because he was supporting my beats and he was like, I want to buy some beats. So as we talked because of the beats, then yeah. I was sharing with him how to go get his album covers done, where to get them done at. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, um, my covers was hot. His mm -hmm. covers was whack. Funky Fat Graphics doing mine, so I just plugged them in there. There was no advertisement to say, oh, go to Funky Fat Graphics to get your, your, your album cover done. Every man for yourself, wherever, however you had to get an album cover back then, you got it done the way you got it done. It was no, oh, this dude popping for that. But they the first ones that made something like, hey, it's a place you can go to. Yeah. So a, a lot of the networking started to happen right from right there because of that location. They making mm -hmm. shirts, posters, flyers, stickers. They paint your car, do, you know. So Master P, once we started interacting and he started making projects, inviting me on his projects, then, you know, I could further share information with him. I'm learning from him too, though, you know. I'm learning that my game work. Here you go. Here you go, man. He right, wasn't right. doing it, now he doing right, it. So right. that's that's... Seeing other people take flight with my game, though, is like, it's my game mixed with their determination and then parts of their own game that got them there. Yeah. So I never be like, oh, somebody stole my game. Nah, I'm just a piece to it because at the end of the day, you still got to cook the pot. I can give you the formula, but you might put too much of this or too much of that, or you might balance it out like I did and hit. Yeah. You feel me? So um, your approach to the game is everything. Like your mental vision of where you trying to go. First and foremost, I want to sell my pack. I want to bring me some money in. I need to pay for some more studio time or some my own equipment, or I need to get my office. Or, but because these are real steps. Now I got an office. Now I got my own studio. Okay, now I'm producing other different people. And now you know. Now we just trying to go far as you can go. Yeah, facts. And th this is around the time you started putting out get low, get low albums, get low players album, right? There's like Get a, Low Players is 1994. Okay. Yeah. That was so There's like the four of y'all that's like the core, but there's like hella other people on that album, right? Like Yeah. Uh Bushy Mo, Black Nate, uh JD and Scat. Um who else on that? Album? Everybody Rob loves it. Blow. I was just going to say, everybody loves that Rob Blow Rob song, Blow going to tell you about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Rob Blow. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm missing somebody, but the first GLP album is definitely my Chronic album. That was my that was my version of the Chronic for me and, and my guys in San Francisco, Filmo District. And it was all produced by you? All produced by me, mixed by me, mastered at Rocket Lab. Yeah. Photos done by Cable Conte and graphics done by Funky Fat Graphics. And yeah. we took flight. Yeah. We, my vision, my dream, all was coming true. I'm like, damn, I got out three projects. I got out Thank of Dope. I got out Don't Start To Measure, Players In The Game. Now I got out GOP. All this is in within less than 18 months. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. And is this when Game Recognized Game was dropped as well? Yeah, Game Recognized Game was on Players in the Game in 93. A few months later, I put it on GLP as a solo version because Mac Maul was Mac Maul was on the original. He on the original, and he didn't want to come do the... Uh, he didn't think the remix was going to... I don't think he thought it was really nothing. You feel me? But that song bigger than any song he ever made. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you like, put, we did it together, though, yeah, so I yeah. give him his credit. But yeah. he always be like, well, I made the song better. Yeah, but I made the beat, and I gave us the title. I remember the original you know I mean? the original verse. Like, Wasn't there like a video of y'all? Nah, the video. Oh, I know what you're talking about. 
It's a video at the end of one of me and Dad's Dillinger DVDs, but it never was an official video for okay. them. Because when I did it by myself, he felt some, some kind of way, like, damn, that nigga just sampled me. Yeah, nigga, you did the hook. What you, I, do, I supposed to redo the hook? Nah, this is the original song. I'm finna sample your hook on the ASR 10. I'm finna fly these vocals in. I'm finna put it down on my on my uh, 24 track ADATs. I got three of them, and your vocals going on the top ADAT. I'm gonna double them and put some reverb on. <laughs> I'm finna spice these things up. It gonna sound like you still just did it right here, cause I, I sampled that thing properly. <laughs> Game, get, get, get game recognized. <laughs> like, you feel me? I made show, and people loved it. Then I scratched in SWV, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it became a. It's a hit right now to this day. You play it, and it's still. So if I, they, they say one hit wonder, well, I claim that. I claim it. Yeah, that's a classic, man. Because to have one song sure. that make me part of the culture way all these years later, even the new generation can. Yeah, you know what I mean, like the, it's a pride of. This song is the official Bay Area anthem. If there is a song that represents the Bay, this had to be in the top two or three. And, and you had the video. You had a clean video for that, too. Well, Shot right in my mama's house on McAllister Street and across the street at the gym. Was that you putting up the budget and, and hiring a director? Nah, that was my cousin. Oh, okay. My cousin gave me some money. It cost 6500 I didn't have it. Mm. He like, I got it. Come on. And were you able to get that in rotation on like? Hell yeah, I was in rotation on Cameo. I mean, uh, the video. Right? Hell yeah, CMC, mm -hmm. California Music mm -hmm. Channel. Mm -hmm. I didn't go BET nationwide. I just went local. Yeah, yeah, I was high tech out here. Out here, I was yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that video, man. It's like classic See that, Frisco. Just to achieve that alone. Sure. We 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 want to hold on to that, but I knew I'm gonna have to be a star at something else now. That don't have no age limit or have no time limit. It don't have nothing but hard work tied to it. Creativity. Yeah. Uh, creating as many albums as possible. Uh, having a catalog of so much. Okay, let me spin off into films. Let me make as many as I can. I don't know when. Let me start a magazine. Boom. It's keeping me relevant. I'm selling front cover pages for 1000 2000 5000 depending on the customer. You can get one for 500 Yeah. I have a sweet deal for you, no matter how much you got. <laughs> when you the owner of the magazine... Nothing is really too small. Well, you, I mean, you were putting in a lot of work, man, because... Uh, <laughs> you got to pay bills. That's yeah. the independent game. <laughs> you got a label. You got albums. You're producing. I'm making babies. You, you're making babies. I got seven children over this career. <laughs> like, literally, like, and I love all my children. I take care of them. I spend time. I invest in my children. Like, literally. Yeah, you know, you're a busy guy, man. Um, but then you put out some classic albums by other artists, too. Yes, like, San Quinn, I think, is the star of all the artists that I produced. What was it about Quinn that just... He was him? hungry, he was young, and he had the great voice. Mm. Yep, yeah. that was it. He was young, he was hungry, and his voice was deeper than all our voice. So we like, shit, we got to put him on, we're going to call him the baby boy. I mean, all those albums, the Edema album is classic. Uh, yeah, it captured a particular sound. That's, yeah. that, that's that JT. You had your own sound, for sure. Yes. Yeah. It, I made Gaffner, enough shit. Locked that, Up is a classic, too. It's a, uh, when I listen to that, it's the error. I caught yeah. it. It's like what I did in Atlanta. It's, it's like I caught that shit. And now, it's 13 years later from the shit I did with Future Now. Like, 13 actual years later, like, damn. I, they grew up under me damn near. I lived there the whole time. Well, no, I stayed there 10 years. Three years I was in Africa, but 10 years they had to deal with me. I had to deal with them. Yeah. And I didn't come back to the Bay at all. Right. I want, I, want, I want to get to that. I want to ask about another artist that you produced for early on, though, which is uh, Messy Marv. Shout out to Mess, man. Hope he get well. Hope he come home, man, and be a brand new man. He was always a very talented guy. The streets loved him a whole lot right out the gate. He had a lot of support. You know, him and Quinn made a lot of motion. Um, and he, he, he just, a, he an icon. Mess an icon for, for, for gangster rap. He an icon out here for us. So shout out to Mess. Um, and his catalog, phenomenal, you know? Do you remember the first time you met him? And Yep, he knocked on my door, mm. on my office in Fillmore Street, and said he wanted to be part of the team, but I, I made him wait. 
Uh, eventually, I put him on a song. No, eventually, I got on one of his songs. Because somebody said they'll put the money up for him. So I'm like, that's easier. So I just get on it. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that's how our relationship started. So, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you about a Frisco rumor mm -hmm. I heard back in high school. Okay. That you have helped several rappers from outside of the Bay mm -hmm. get their chains back. Mm. Uh, I heard one of those people was Nas. That yeah, true? that's that's true. Nas came out here. I didn't know him, but I was just a big-ass Nas fan. Ice Cube, my favorite. Nas, I had to be my second favorite rap artist. So when he came, he just made a bad choice, jumped in the crowd. I seen him. They was attacking him when he tried to, you know, right after the show, he just killed the fucking show. Like, Where was this? This was on uh, downtown Frisco somewhere. Mm. Yeah, probably by, uh, I want to say by fifth, sixth, fifth, like a few blocks away from City Hall. Okay. Yup, and um, I didn't hold the chain long or none of that. Like, once it happened, I was able to retrieve it right there, give it back to him right there. It was a bunch of guys attacking him. I'm like, man, get up, walk. Like, you know, I, I jumped in the crowd. But I got niggas with me, though, too, though. So I guess they seen that, so they kind of fell back. I grabbed them, took them upstairs, let them get, you know, and then shit, yo. So that was like a respect thing. Yup, and then one day I end up getting some of his old songs that he wasn't using and doing that shit with game. Yeah. Because I was the Nas fan. Like, the Nas shit, like that, once he saw me again, but I never ended up with the relationship. But game ended up like they was the best friends, but I'm the one who put them together, though. And that's not a no knock on neither one of them. But no, no, I, was, I, I was just saying, yeah. from that situation, I didn't really capitalize on it like I could, but... I was just doing what I would have wanted a nigga to do for me, man. Give me my shit back, man. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of dope I'm, that she did it on the street. Like not that. even budge. Them yeah. niggas ran. There's a lot of stories about uh, out-of-town rappers getting getting their chain snatched uh, in San Francisco. Just keep it real. Nah, this is a chain snatching city. <laughs> this, <laughs> this shit like New York. You got to be careful, boy. <laughs> They got Young Buck out here while he was with me. I had to cash some boys out to get that thing back. Yeah, that was a, that was another one that I, I heard Hell about. Yeah, I'm like, you ain't, I ain't and nothing happened to nobody while they with me. So yeah. I took full responsibility. I was I was in high school. And some kids came in like, yeah, Young Buck, I robbed and filmed on last night. No, nah, I was on this point. I was on this point. Yeah, okay, but nah, okay. nah, nah, nah. I couldn't let that happen though. Yeah, but I couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I, these type of things, bro. I ain't gonna do that for everybody. Right. No, 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 I ain't saying like I'm trying to save the world. <laughs> no, but if me and you together and me and you walk out here and go around this corner and we getting a burrito or some food or something and a situation happen, I can't run and leave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You feel me? And you shouldn't run. No, nah, nah, I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw that in there. So if something happened, we just try to get it resolved and make it up out of there to get back here together. Well, because Young Buck was running around with you at that time. I point. had him with yeah. me, and he was trying to spend money on a new rapper from Frisco, and mm -hmm. some of them niggas got jealous. Okay. okay. They got jealous of their own artists. Um, I want to ask about another name, uh, Jay-Z. You had a chance to connect with Jay-Z in the past? My first time connected with Jay-Z, we had a show together. His first show ever in San Francisco. Uh, Chuck, that be with uh, Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. Him and his guys had something called the, the Butter Line. Something where you, you come and it's like a thing where everybody just comes. It's like a party, a party line. Basically, they booked Jay-Z and Dame Jazz. That, that, um, that show, he was signed to freeze who was signed to priority. Ain't no nigga like the one I got. Yeah. The first, before Rockefeller, it right. was called Freeze. Well, it was a label that helped them get distributed through priority called Freeze. So we talked about that and he was saying how he didn't, he didn't, he's been a spinoff from that shit. Like that's really the base of the conversation. Like we talked, he, he knew who I was. You know, we, we signed to priority together. Mm. He knew who Quinn was. He liked the Quinn, all the shit. Yeah, so that's my beginning with Jay Z for sure. And so did he like also because he's another like businessman, CEO type. Did, did y'all build on that level too? Just... No, we well actually we just discussed being on priority records. Okay, yeah, okay. we didn't talk about strategizing none of that. And but he definitely said I'm finna spin off because I need to get my own label. Yeah, and that's when Def Jam gave him a fifty fifty joint venture and a lot of millions. 
to come over there because they the one distributed the single Ain't No Nigga mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, either it was the Nutty Professor or it was it was Nutty Professor. Yeah. Ain't no nigga like the one I got. Yup. So, uh, so that was, that's like, oh, if I could have had game recognized game on that, it would have boosted it so much more. But back then, I didn't know about shit I should have been asking for. I was too young. Yeah. I was just happy that they gave me all the money and I liked it that. Yeah, for sure. Anybody would. And then, kind of, strangely enough, uh, <clears throat> at some point, Memphis Bleak decides to come out with Get Low Records of his own. That was something that I think he was just doing, trying to take a shot at us. For whatever reason, I don't know how we ended up on his radar to feel like he going to take our shit. But once we start communicating and he like, nigga, this is my shit. I'm, I'm the real get low. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nigga, you ain't even got an album out, bro. Come <laughs> on, bro. So a year, a couple years go by, then we finally see each other. And he with, he with Jay-Z. I'm with Young Buck and 50 Cent at the Summer Jam. I think this 2004. No, 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 this 2002 or 2003. Yep, uh, Santa Clara. And we had some words, and it looked like it was finna go down, and Jay-Z like, hold on, hold on, man, what's going on, man? Look here, man, if this shit ain't about no money, man, this ain't about nothing, man. I'm like, nah, man, you know, he like, bro, y'all got to work that shit out, bro. Y'all got to work that shit out. I was like, this, that's the second Jay-Z interaction. Because I'm a Buck, and Buck, he like, man, fuck this nigga. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Buck trying to, he wasn't amping me, but I'm like, bro, the man trying to play me like, bro, press on this nigga. So when I start pressing Jay-Z, he's pressed back like, hell nah, man, y'all ain't finna do that right here, bro. Y'all gonna have to talk about this shit, work it out. We never did, but that was, that's, that's. Well, I don't think anything came of his get low. He didn't pursue it, right? Yeah. He didn't care. I mean, imagine being Jay-Z, little homie, and you don't even have a, a record label going. He didn't even take... Maybe, you know what? A lot of people don't care about the other business shit. I'm, like, I, I want to be a rapper. Yeah. Rappers don't have to do all the work. I want a manager. I want an agent. Yeah. That is something that... Uh, I'm pretty sure he regret now because he could have found him an artist just because you Jay-Z artist. Okay, Jay and him ain't pushing your shit right now. Let me find some, start me a label and find me a Jay-Z or a new, yeah. a Kanye or something and, and, and do it, you know? Well, I think there's two types of artists, bro. I think one type needs people to put them on, needs people to do shit for them, needs people to point them in a direction and all they want to do is make music. Where the money at? And then the other... <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. And then the other type is the person who's like, I'm going to figure this shit out. I'm going to get it done. I'm not going to wait for someone Bruh. to put me on. If someone does put me on, cool, but I'm, I'm going to pick it up and run with the opportunity and figure out what I got to do to be straight. This is what I want to say. That I think hella important as me being an underdog and less talented on so many levels, I said prayers more than everybody else. And I think God just answered me better because <laughs> some people had talent, but they never prayed. Mm. When I used to say, bro, let's pray for we go on stage. Like, you know, don't you see artists? And, sure. But I used to say, let's pray for we do the song or let's pray. Mm. And I could tell some, I ain't going to say no names, but sometimes the guys would be like, man, this nigga always want to pray. I'm like, bro, Remember when we used to didn't pray and shit wasn't happening? And I introduced the praying and then stuff looked like it started. We all started saying like, damn, maybe God talking to us. No, Allah. We learned about the name Allah. They like, won't you try to pray in this name? Allah. Right? This is you, you from you, you, you African. You, you a black man. This is the original name. This is so man, when we start praying, that's why on the GOP I'm it say Allah and JT. Yeah. That's my first project that's not me that's coming out my brain as an idea you feel me but it was praying to him when I, when we started praying and then don't stop till we major came out players in the game came out a year later now we doing GOP I say bro we gotta make an I JT I'm, you know like I gotta I gotta say this homie. <laughs> I gotta tell him cause I want the streets to know hey won't you try this bro yeah. And then stop doing all the dope dealing, killing, and all the robbing and stealing and shit and try to work on your product and say a prayer, nigga, and something can come your way. 
There, there's always been a Straight lot of um, messages about Islam in, in your music, I noticed, too. Well, you know what? I never claimed to be a Muslim rapper. Uh-huh. If you notice, I never pushed it on people. I just shared where I got this game, and they'd be like, oh, you're amazing. How do you got all these ideas and shit? You? I say, bruh, I used to be a car thief. Nigga, I never thought about no business, nothing until I met Minister, when well, I met, till I started listening to Minister Farrakhan, but we heard Farrakhan with Ice Cube, though. And I'm like, maybe that's how Ice Cube got strong enough to tell a record label you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not going on tour. Like, who, how do you turn down hella thousands of dollars that's waiting for you from Jerry Heller and then you telling them no? Yeah. The minister made him to know, brother, you valuable, be patient, and you can have your own label if you just do everything that Easy e did. And sure enough, man. So, um, I just want the public to hear that because my first project, the first song is I Line JT. I'm like, I can't, I can't be fake. I gotta tell them where I got it. No, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you I'm glad you <laughs> I'm glad you put that out there straight up. Cause I want artists to know and filmmakers, podcasters. Look, bro, I'm not here to be no pastor, preacher, none of that. I'm just here to say that acknowledge him in a way where you ask him for the help. Yeah. And then you start stopping certain things that you might do that you know he ain't happy about. And the more things you could cut loose that you know he ain't happy about, and you probably ain't happy neither, then the more you could be empowering yourself where well, you could take away some of the cloud of, 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 of things that's not clear. The clarity is, is dull a little bit because the way we moving or the things that we do, it could take away where it take your motivation. You don't even have the strength to want to come in there and do your podcast or he got to sit in front of that computer and he got to touch all the knobs. And yeah. Today, I don't feel like... No, uh, that's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then sometime a day could turn into a week or it could turn into a month on accident. Yeah. Maybe it's a woman. Maybe it's high. Maybe he's doing this. I don't know. The thing that take your motivation, you're like, man, this ain't me. Yeah, yeah, man. I, like, how do you waste a whole week? Mm-hmm. When you got bills, like, what man can literally say, man, I didn't feel like calling none of my clients this week. No, I have been right. through that, bro. Yeah. I didn't work my... Inst Imagine Instagramming. Some of these things is about to come to an end. Some of these things about to cost $20, $30 a month for Instagram to become a super uh, thing right now. If they just said, man, we doing 20 we want $20 a month for, for, for basic accounts. And if you want to go live, we want $35 do you know we all gonna pay that? Yeah, and right, you know it, they right. could, people could cry out and be like, "Oh, these people!" In a minute, within one or two months, the profit span that'll come from some like how Twitter did they uh, mm -hmm. well, what he did he says pay some money or something like or, the verification and all that. Is this Instagram you pay to? Yeah. Oh, it's pay. They started rolling out like you could pay to how get much verified. Was it? I don't even know. I think, I think it was, it was 15 like or 20, 20, 20 a month. Is it per month? Yeah. You pay 15 per month? For that blue check. For that blue check. Yeah. So what I just said, I said this a few years ago. I said, bro, we better take advantage of posting shit on Facebooks and all this damn, like take advantage of it, engaging your clients or your potential customers or reeling in some new ones through a creative method of what you post because in a minute it's going to be harder and this shit going to be worth more money to them and it's they going to make more money because they got to charge us. Like, boy, it's certain people who making a killing off a of free platform. Yeah, for real. It's certain people making a killing off a of free platform. Yeah. So Instagram knowing, so... The value that we got to add to ourselves is doing something new that you haven't been normally doing. Like, how do a person, how does an artist that's not eating off their rap right now, JT, what, would, what should they be doing? They should do merchandising. Mm -hmm. What else, JT? They should be doing a short film for YouTube mm -hmm. and preparing to go to Tubi. Mm -hmm. A person with a cheap movie shot on iPhone that land on Tubi and make a bigger check within three months because they do every three months there. They make the payment. It'll be bigger than most of these guys' rap check for their new album. Yeah. With a feature from E-40 and JT and uh, <laughs> who else? Uh, you got a feature from Mozzie. Right. You spend banjos for that. You got a feature from Larry June. You spend racks for that. Your monthly check, boy, is not, it's not, it's not even what you spent. 
No, I'm glad. I'm glad you're giving it up like that because I ain't I, trying to disrespect nobody. No, 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 no. Because you know people you could be. No. Oh, Fee talking about my project. No, no, no I'm no. saying the ratio of income. Yeah. For a new artist right now with features, you got a chance if you buzzing TikTok and doing the bam bam boo. But if you're not working your social media to engage your people with your for your product, then you wasting fucking valuable no, time. No, what you said is like those those slumps, <laughs> those slumps that people go through. And I'm glad you you were vulnerable about vulnerable about it because everybody does go through it. A lot of, especially with social media, people like to make it seem like it's easy, like they're always on and it's just coming natural to them. But really, there are days it's gonna be harder than others to like push yourself to get up and do this shit. But man, and and and, and today. Even myself, because I have, see, when you know you got to do some business, but part of my work was I got to make some new beats for my clients that's contacting me now since I've been on social media showing them back making beats on the iPad and I'm, you know, having some fun with it, right? But it's people that's like, okay, I need a five pack, I need a three pack. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, I can't really be bullshit now because no. now this the extra few racks that I'm going to be needing over the rest of this month. I'm back in the bay. So I got to live like a Bay. Like, I'm from the Bay again. I can't act like I'm in the A. I got to yeah. act like I'm from the Bay right now and be like, boy, don't waste this moment in time. I've been gone for 13 years. I wanted to ask you about that, too, because I heard in another interview you, you mentioned that one of the reasons you bounced to Atlanta is that you felt like the Bay Area just was not... It just was not cracking anymore. Like I feel like that right now. I'm yeah. only back for my soul to give part of my soul to my people here. Uh, any work or any legendary moves that I could prove I could do one more time while I'm back here, that's what I'm back for. I'm back to see my people interact again, you know, catch my vibe of being home, you know, but without the drama that's going on and all the controversy and all the... The industry part of this is not what I see. So I need to create what I want to do in the Bay to make me happy to be here because I don't see nothing that's making me happy to, that I want to be part of. It's kind of crazy because we started this interview talking about how thriving it all was, right? Like in the early on. 90s, it's just the booming. Thrivation. All these, the different rappers. Yes. What What is it specifically that you think just just went left? Like, I think the violence curved all of the, the energy that could take the artist further. A lot of dope artists that that can't get motion right now based upon the violence. The violence has controlled it. Now the violence have moved to Atlanta, so violence is heavy there too. But being from the Bay, they already scared for certain shows, even though I've been on Instagram watching the Bay have a great time with a lot of parties and shows. So mm -hmm. I just probably don't know where, where it's happening at. I know Oakland definitely doing their thing over there. So um, I think Mr. Fab, though, is keeping... He a good example of creating his own motion then. Like, if it ain't nothing popping over, well, let me make something popping over. Yeah. So I uh, salute to Fab for uh, reinventing his business model and formulas. You know, things that make it popping. That we got the, the barbecue this weekend, or we got the, what do you say? We got the topless party in sack, or the, we going to Miami, or you feel me? I got my club open, we going to have poetry tonight. Those are the things that's keeping it lit. So shout out to Fab, but I don't see too many other people. I'm pretty sure there are some um, promoters here that I'm just not familiar with that have their thing where this Sunday is going down and Saturday night is going to be here, but Tuesday we're going to have the open bar. Yeah. Or the, you know, uh, It's, it's kind of like, rare, bro. I mean, we, we had our History of the Bay party in <clears> July. <throat> that shit was a fucking success. It's like over a thousand people. Okay, Everybody had like a good that. time. That's we brought out legends, uh, old school cats, new school <laughs> cats. But I think what you're saying about Fab is this is what I, this is my thoughts to the Bay. It's like, in your in your time, right, when I grew up, it was like, okay, Frisco, that's JT, that's Dre Dog, that's Cougnut, that's Quinn Oakland, that's Three Times Crazy, that's Looney's, that's this. Richmond, there's these guys, Vallejo, Mac Dre. But now there's so many rappers and there's so many artists, and there's so many different styles, and there's so much shit going yes. on that it's impossible to create one unified thing mm -hmm. where everybody is locked in. Mm -hmm. So I think right now, it's like you said, it's up to everybody just to create their own their own bubble you and get it popping. You have to create your motion. Yeah. Um, but for those who still live the party life, you know, the older crowd, I think, safer. 
The oh, younger yeah, crowd, yeah. I think you might get shot. Yeah. Because they, you know, they they feel like they want to come. Like, just who, where my ops at? Yeah, bro. I know. Some, is they in here? Yeah. They, it might be 10,000 ladies right here, but for whatever, for some reason, is the ops in here? You no, know? that's crazy. If people are just like spraying up just random Schools, shit. I seen and, it. Yeah, I bro. Seen it. I seen it, man. Yeah. Uh, it's rough to be here, man. I know if people go down south, it's going to become, or a lot of things is happening down south where you might start to see some of these same elements. But when you're a new face within the elements, you don't really, it doesn't affect you until they come to your doorstep. Yeah. So even people who move in here and they out and about in Oakland, they don't feel it until their car get bipped and then they could be very angry about that. Yeah. Like, I lost my laptop or I lost my this or my that or that. So the, the angle of, of moving around, the bay just, um, I think I'm interested and I'm excited to see whatever God bless me to do here one more time. I know community service, I got to do that because I went to all these cities and helped community service. I went and spoke at prisons and juveniles, community centers, like offer myself to the community because um, that could become something that's popping for me that is something that I'm actually doing that the people are benefiting from as opposed to me and how much money did I make. Yeah. You see, so part of me is on that that mission. And I want everybody to download my app, Traflix, because I'm an independent software developer. Um, and that's the newest thing that I thought. The ratio change right now of me catching up for 30 years worth of money that I might have missed, the one thing that potentially can get me all of that and more is software and my own software because that the leverage if you do it right and this thing get to popping in Kenya and Burkina Faso all these places in Africa that I went I'm updating it right now but in a minute people gonna hear about this shit like right now I have a basic just basic my, my films on there it's mm -hmm. streaming but the updates and possibilities of what I could do to add this button and this page and this functionality within what I have that is the thing that I could become a hundred million dollars could be coming my way. Fifty million dollars after taxes. Two hundred million, a hundred million after taxes. A hundred million, JT. Fifty years of hip hop, JT. You about to be fifty years old in November. If you can do some amazing JT, the bigger figure type things from California now, where there's access to more software, more venture capitals, more money circulating for these type of things, then within these two months. And I'm going to state it right here in the name of God. Man, whatever he blessed me with, it's going to be something phenomenal. And I'm thinking it's going to be something that give me my retirement money. If I never do nothing mm. else, I need to make retirement money for me and my wife and my children right now. This ain't about how shining, about nothing. No, retirement money. Money that don't get blow. Pay for the land. Pay for the houses. Pay for the cars. No car notes. No mortgages. Live within our means. But if I hit for a big enough bag, 50 years of hip-hop, I didn't get invited to their party. But I want to throw my own 50-year-old birthday party and 50 years of hip-hop all in one, celebrating me and my contribution to the 50 years of hip-hop. Well, right man, here in the yeah, back. I'll pull up. Um, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. The 50 years of hip hop, JT, the bigger figure. No, it's, a, it's a trip, bro. Just like hearing you talk is like, wow, you're still like very hungry, bro. And there's still like a lot left to do. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. There's a lot more we could talk about. We can come back for part two. Yeah, I think Because I, I think know there's so. more things that could be that the other guys didn't even ask. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like we in a bay. We got way more internal. We got internal stories that I didn't give them because yeah, that yeah. was national right. people they asked. They didn't ask about the sea bowls and the. Let me ask you one last about, thing, man. What's, what's one of your memories of Kugna? Rest in peace. And when was your first time meeting him? Man, I can't even think of the first time I met Kugna, but I just knew he was our Tupac first. Kugna, my, my first memory, I, I would think Tupac. The real thing from Frisco. That's what I would think. Savage, talk his shit, stand his ground, get down. I can't speak on what he done and put some people up under the earth, but 
He talked about it, and I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> on them albums. <laughs> I got my 12 game shot. <laughs> oh, man. God damn. See, he make you believe. You. Listen, yeah, sounds, he would have been sounds. a problem if he would have signed with Suge Knight. Tupac was trying to bring him to death row. Mm -hmm. Put that out there. I know y'all probably heard that, but Tupac was trying to bring Kuvnet to death row, and he got killed. Or he died in an in in accident. So just think. Tupac is fucking cool, man. That, 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 that. I mean, just visualize that. And you know he gonna dance with his bars, mm -hmm. but his voice is gonna be so... So, oh, you know what? I'm gonna put this out there. Whoever do AI, we need a new cool nut song ASAP. So I don't know which one of y'all people that's been to watch this, but I need to see that on my, on my, uh, in my DM. We want a cool nut song, a brand new cool nut song. AI. That would be crazy. Has Selsky write it. Mm. But, they, but you know, they got to, I don't know how they take the voices. They can take of, people's voices and have and them say you whatever. you do me too, though. Yeah. You go do me too. <laughs> but now I appreciate y'all, though, for having I me. I got you, my bro. son with me. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be nine. And, uh, but the good thing is, though, I'm right in the area. Uh, also, I might be able to offer y'all some things um, through the Traplix formula of how to leverage the networking power. Like you just said, this rewind. JT, we got different talent, flavors, styles, locations, everything. It's hard to come up under one thing. Well, me, I am like a magnet for putting the movement together. So I would love to come back here to discuss the formula of how to leverage Intellectual property starting with something like Traplix, right? But there's money that could be collected, but this could be a part of the Traplix shit that what y'all got going on within this. Right. You feel me? It ain't too many people with their own platform. And then I, <clears throat> then I also want to offer this platform right here on this camera. I want to offer it to y'all. I'll make it make sense where I can get you my codes, but it's your, your name. It's you guys' The same thing you doing here, you putting it on your own app. Mm -hmm. The hardest part about the app is the, the, the making an original app is the coding because you got to make it one line at a time and it might be 10,000 lines, 20,000 lines, 40,000 lines. Yeah. It might be three, four guys and all they're doing is going... So the time it take six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months building one from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, <clears throat> I want to be like Bill Gates and I want to make my software available for other companies in a licensing type format and or just a spinoff and say, huh, flat rate, something that you know, some y'all can offer, whatever, however it go. But I want to be known that JT boy, he getting people they own platforms right now. So this is the first place hearing me say it. So on our next talk, I would yeah, like to bring this. Back, man. Out of, yeah, we're running back, man. I'd love to bring this notepad. Yeah. This notebook back. And in the meantime, anything else you want us to help put out there? What, you know, you got our Download support, bro. Trap Flicks. Download Trap Flicks. <laughs> download Trap Flicks. It's on the iOS. It's on the Android. It's a website. Uh, I'm proud of it. I went way to Africa, man. I know we didn't get to talk about that. That'd be on the next one. Yep. But I went there, and that was one of the things. They was like, JT, they might be poor in Africa, but you better Google this. They got people in villages that know how to do the software that America want all this money for, and a guy in the village would take a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. That's what I got. Mm -hmm. I got blessed to meet some of that type of shit. It took me two and a half years, though. And I lost money investing with people that I thought could do it. But software, I'm saying it on here, is the future because AI and all of that, that sounds hella complicated. But software sounds easier and achievable. And there's people right here in the Bay Area that I would love to meet that know this stuff. And if we can get a committee of developers, like how they have the Apple Dang conference and all them dudes will come that, with their laptops and all that. If we could get a committee of the other kind of people in the Bay, Fig, you didn't work with rappers and producers and all that. What about software developers? Mm. Like with, with, with uh, Mark Zuckerberg in the movie when he made Facebook. He was on college like, hey, y'all come over here. We're going to drink beer, and, uh, eat the pizza, and, and whoever could make this thing or something. And them dudes really did that shit in one night. Yeah. So yeah, much love, yo, uh, y'all. So your boy Fig, man, I'm out. We're gonna run it back, man. JT, the bigger figure, the legend, 
Fig Panamera, Trap Flicks, go grab that, go stream all the music, and get this man his respect and his props. This is Dregs One, another episode of the History of the Bay. Peace. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank.